From now on, no profanities anymore. Um, uh, this is the list of repositories that we have provided with to you. And we ourselves, or Mr. Van Hammer, created three revisions. So anyone that has the number uh, of revisions standing on three, uh, we know that he didn't commit anything. We don't know if he or she didn't do anything, but we know that they didn't commit anything. Uh, what I am particularly particular like is group number 79. I don't know, do not know who that is. It doesn't matter, but he did a lot of commits and he understands the concept. Every time you, you have a green, a red green cycle, then you do a commit. Why? Because then you have a success, as in you had a red test, which is good, and then an implementation which says the test uh, is pa has been passed, and then you commit. If you further on in the line make an error, you can revert back. But the most important thing is that this shows us, as in proof, that you develop test-driven. Yes? So commit as often as you have a useful change to your code. What you shouldn't do is commit stuff that is broken unless we tell you to do so. Because sometimes you want to ask us a question and want to show us the code that you currently have, which is somehow broken, as in it doesn't compile, that is actually bad, or it, uh, the test doesn't don't run and you do not understand. Then what you can do is either send us an email, which we might answer, or use this Slack channel. There's also a Slack channel you want to, uh, to uh, register yourself to. Uh, something like uh, Twitter, but then for professionals and without the profanities of uh, Mr. Trump. Um, but then uh, you could uh, ask us questions and the student assistants also know uh, this uh, thing. Yes? Sorry? The Slack link doesn't link. Thank you for the... Please send me a mail so that Mr. Sober can repair it. He knows how to do that. I don't know. Yeah, so... Uh, pay attention to this thing. This is how we observe and how the student assistants also can observe what you do. Actually, this is a public page. Anyone can see that. The lucky thing is that your name is not uh, um, derivable from, uh, from this table. And also your student number is not in here. Nowhere. So the, the only uh, persons that actually know who the real uh, repository belongs to is yourself, are yourselves and the teachers. Yeah? So... Um, Use uh, use the things that are provided to you to uh, your advantage, so that we ho have to we can focus on the important things. Now, okay. One remark: I just uh, insert as a new project uh, for your practical work that is not compilable to the third person. So don't think like, okay, there was shit in there, but we expect you to be able to understand why it doesn't compile and that you can yeah. uh, solve the issue. All the all of these issues are simply solvable by clicking on the bulb because it's yellow bulb with a red dot, and that typically means that uh, some type is missing, and that is the type that is in the exercise that you need to create yourselves, like an exception type or some other type. I don't know. Yeah, depending on the exercise, of course. Okay. The question was, what is it? What is the reason that in line 16 of this uh, code? The compiler says this is really bogus, and I have no clue to resolve it. And I want other hands. Uh, you're sitting with your yeah. hand on your head? Yeah? No clue? Does it mean no clue? Yes. Exactly. Object, which is this now the static type of runtime exception, because line 16 says object is the type. The variable name is runtime exception, and the expression that produces the element that goes into this runtime exception is a runtime exception. An ex uh, is indeed a normal exception. But a static type is what the compiler is concerned about. And we are talking to the compiler in this case. It's a static test. No running code, just the compiler says, is this useful code? And the compiler says, object is something you cannot throw. That's exactly the answer that the person gave. You cannot throw anything. You only can throw throwables. And indeed, throwables, throwable is a type in the Java type system, which is on top of all the things that are throwable, as in all errors, all exceptions, and all runtime exceptions. Yeah, there's a whole hierarchy of, of that stuff. You can also see that, I think, on the website. Uh, yeah, it might be here. There's an exception, oh, there's an exception summary. I should have gone 
shouldn't have done this. Uh, let's see now. Uh, should be all most no. I should uh, probably uh, do a bit here. But this is the exception. You can't see it. Sorry. This is the exception hierarchy that is uh, defined, and it's not all the exceptions. You see that in the in the pink box and in the yellow box. Of there are many more exceptions. Also below runtime exception, the green one. Remember the, the colors of the bold. The green one also has a lot more exceptions that are not uh, shown in this case. Yeah. But you have a, a, an object which is not throwable. A derived class, or throwable itself is an object because the assignment was possible, but that is the only thing that you can throw. But also the only thing that you can catch. So we have a catch statement, which we'll see in a minute. Then the only th parameter that is allowed in the catch expression is something that is throwable. Uh, think of baseball, because, well, this the concept is probably f of American or of British origin because and they tend to throw things and then wait for 10 minutes and then uh, do the next throw. That's what they call sport, baseball in this case. Um, okay, anyway. Um, so uh, let's go back to our IDE. So what, did I what do I do to change this problem? Same hands again. Uh -huh. Back row. Uh, the, uh, Ex sorry? Extending, the, uh, interface. extending what interface? The, uh, the How would I do that? Oh, over here you mean? Yes. No, that is not uh, not good. Go ahead. Oh wait, 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 wait! Stop. Sorry. A new hand up. Yes. Ex ah, that looks good. That sounds good. Let's see if that works. Throw a ball, and now it says it says something different. It says now it has the, the, the bulb change. The the red change from. Yellow bulb with red, red, which has a different meaning. And if I pointed it, it says unsupported exception, throwable. What does it specify? Florian. We need to define a clash block or what is the other, other solution? Yeah, exactly. That is what the, what the bulb will say. Um, so. Uh, if I if I click on it, I get uh, three solutions. Often three solutions. The first one is add a throws clause for uh, throwable. I'll try them all of them. The next one is try uh, surround statement with try catch, and the other one is surround block with try catch. There's a small distinction between the two, but we'll try them anyway. Yeah. So let's uh, let's try uh, all of them in order. The first the first one. Oh, ah. Sorry. Uh, the first one is this one. What does that do? You saw the text change. That's what does the text change do? Yes, please do. The method now throws an exception. That is, the exception that it throws inside the, inside the body of the method is simply forwarded. So you say, I make a problem here, but I send the exception up in the call tree or down, but doesn't matter. The one that called me, called this method, now has to deal with the exception. So if I write a method that calls this method, which I can very easily show, like um, make another method. You know, let's si simply make it in a test method and remove this. Then I have a, a method. If I now uh, do call um, sh test show exception one, and I do it like that, then again I get the same possibility. Here you see that you can add a throw scratch or surround it with a, with a, a surround the statement that with a try catch. If I do this one, then it's what, what the second option suggested, namely catch the exception in this case in the calling method. Yeah? So the calling method now catches the exceptions exception and needs to deal with it yeah and uh, the default 
implementation of what is inside the catch block is uh, that it, the information is logged to a logger. That is, it's recorded somewhere so that you can later on see what happened, what went wrong in your application, what is the reason that your application stopped, or what is the reason that a database connection was not available, or what is the reason that an SQL query didn't, uh, didn't succeed uh, in a proper way. All kinds of reasons that might be the reason that you want to catch this exception and deal with it. And the least that you can do is log it. Okay, so what we did, we, we chose to uh, forward the exception by adding a throws clause to the method. So I'm simply forwarding the exception. So the one that calls me deals, has to deal with the exception. The next one uh, would be uh, add a try catch block that is deal with the exception. Uh, that is um, uh, surround the method that we want to execute in this line, in this case line 25, uh, with a try catch block. And what happens in this strike catch block is something like a safety net or the, the, the glove of the catcher in the baseball game that tries to catch this ball. Now, this, this catch statement also specifies what throwable it will accept, what it will try to catch. Question is, what does it catch? Everything. Well, not everything. Everything, everything throwable. And this is the worst thing that you can do in dealing with exceptions. Why? You are very unspecific because you get a throwable and then you have to find out what happened. So the best thing you can do is indeed catch the exception that has occurred. How can we do that? Well, first of all, clear away this rubbish that is doing throwable runtime exception and then throw runtime exception, but do the normal uh, idiom and the normal idiom would be something like this remove all this uh, this junk and simply simply uh, type throw and uh, that's it because that is the normal idiom when a problem occurs you create a new exception you capture the problem area if you will that is actually something that we will have a look at in a minute um, and uh, then you deal with the problem or you forward the problem you deal with the exception or you forward the exception. Now, the question is, back to the original question at the, at the end of the break, the question that I wanted to ask you, why is the a bulb at line um, uh, 16 now? Uh, no, uh, sorry, 18. No? Yeah, this, this one says prom pr probably the, the variable doesn't exist. So, but, so I'll remove that line because that is still a uh, remnant of the thing that I did wrong. But indeed, indeed, whenever you uh, throw an exception, then everything after that is below the statement that throws the exception is not executed anymore. Yeah? So if you think an exception should occur and it doesn't, the only thing you need to verify that the next statement is not executed or executed. I'll show that now. So there are multiple ways to deal with uh, exceptions, but also to deal with the testing of exceptions. There are th uh, multiple variants, and the ones that I wanted to show you are three. Classical, simply exception handling, and then um, so uh, we can remove this one because it is no longer throwable, but is a runtime exception. The distinction between throwable and runtime exception is that throwable, you must specify as to catch it, uh, is a checked exception, uh, but runtime exception is not a, uh, it's a green ball, it's a green exception in the sense that you can throw it anywhere you like. Okay, so this statement will never be executed. Yeah. Now. Let's, um, let's uh, focus on the method below and <coughs> make this one the test uh, exception method. Oh, uh, something like that. This is the test exception method, and this will be my test. And this will simply be a helper method that does uh, throw the exception. 
So this is the exception thrower. And of course, this should also be changed into exception thrower. Yeah. Now, how can I test that indeed line 23 throws an exception? How can I test that? More hands, please. Can I select one? Yeah. Carsten. Like the system out print, is that testing? You could do an assert, or you raise your hand for a brief time, and I saw it, so then go ahead, uh, help us. Throw or fail? Throw or fail, yeah, sounds, sounds like I, uh, something that I understand, like uh, uh, assert, which is, a, which is a, a class which has many static methods, and one of them is fail. Uh, oh. fail this one uh, should not be reached this statement should not be reached that is it should not uh, occur yeah now what is the color of the test is it red or green when I run it Who guesses red? Who guesses green? The rest is sleeping. Yeah? Now, let's try. Yes? It's green? Is that good? How do we make it red? What do we need to do to make it red? Yeah, uh, other than the spelling error, of course. Yeah. How do I make a test fail? I would uh, comment out the throw new runtime exception. So Why? So That's correct. Oh, yeah. You say you're saying you're changing the implementation. We, the m implementation is the top method. Mm -hmm. The exception thrower is the, the, the implementation <coughs> of the method that you want to test. And when you want the test to fail, you shouldn't change the test, but you should change the implementation. Actually, you shouldn't have the implementation. Yeah? And then implement it in the simplest way. And the simplest way, well, for me, that would in this case simply mean that you do uh, comment out this line and then run the test. And then, oh, wonderful. Yes. So what's wrong here? <coughs> this is a deep one because I didn't expect this because I forgot. And this that is very this is very important to understand. Why is this test still green? Well, we might look at the output window IDE tools. Where's the output, Mr. Van der Ham? Control 4. What do we see over here? This is the output that occurred when I ran the test. And here we see, dang! It looks like an exception. So the exception occurred, but the test is still green. Why? Suppose we catch the exception. I suppose we catch, catch an exception. And what are we catching? What are we indeed catching? Yes, timekeeper, yes, please. All throwables. And we ca are catching indeed all throwables. And now you know how unit testing works. How does unit testing work? 
Mo, how does unit, unit testing work? I'm, I'm lucky that I knew, knew your name. You now understand how unit testing work, works. What happened? We see in the output that an exception has been called, and this exception is of type Java lang assertion error, and it also has a message, should not be reached. And we recognize this message from the code that we have. That is the message inside the fail. So this throwable, not only th uh, this catch throwable, not only catches the errors or the exception that we wanted to catch, but also it also ex it also catches the exceptions that JUnit uses to notice or to s to to send to us or to uh, communicate to us that a problem is present in your code. So JUnit simply does a test that you specify, like see if these things are equal or see if a statement is true, as assert true, does nothing if truth is the case, but it throws an exception, an assert, Java lang assert uh, error in this case, it throws that, uh, that exception, and that is the way that, and that is w an exception that the JUnit framework wants to catch, because it see if it sees this, then it knows that the error that the, the method is in error. You have a failure. And that is what causes the red color that we like. Sergey. Uh, for instance, for instance, yes. So what should you do? First of all, make sure that you know uh, what you want to catch in this case, because you do not want to have an unspecific error to be caught but you want it to be a very specific error to be caught. Yeah? So, um, what you then should do is make this more specific. Now, let's uh, first of all, uh, let's throw a null point exception. Why not? Um, no, let's expect a null point exception. Yes? Yes, and let's um, see what happens in this case. <coughs> Rerun the test, look at the test result. And now it says failed, not reached. And uh, why? Well, because the implementation is broken. Uh, so uh, let's make an implementation that is, uh, well, looks a bit like it, but not quite. And now, it causes an error because what you see now is again the same thing. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, not quite. It, uh, it now catches a runtime exception and the test wasn't prepared for that runtime exception. Because this exception is something that the test isn't prepared to catch. The test says, I want to have the assert errors, and then I know that the, the code is failing. But now an, uh, an exception occurred that the, f that the test wasn't prepared for. And that's why you get this red one. Yeah, that says something in your test code is wrong. Something happened that the test not, didn't expect. So your test must also prepare for those cases. So what do you do? What do you do? You could do that, but let's first make sure that our tests are correct. So this, that this red one turns into the proper thingy, that is the yellow triangle that says the test fails and the test itself was okay. And the test said, oh, the implementation is kaput. Wrong. Yeah? So what do, what do I do? Yeah, that is, that's true, but it's not what I wanted. I first want... I first want to s this test to be correct, a healthy test. And a healthy test has not this color, but the other color, the triangle with the red dot or something like that, that says test failed. Yeah, it's a red line, but it's a failed test, not an error, t a test and error. This, in this is the case of a the test that is wrong. Yeah, what should I do? Well, no, not quite. What, what happened actually, yes?
That is the, the other solution. I first want to deal with the exception in the normal way because I'm still at the, at the domain of what exceptions are, how, how what do the beasts work, how does unit test work, catches exceptions. Yes? We can make uh, the first method throw the exceptions to our test. How would I do that? Was our specifying throws a runtime exception or something like that? No. No. The trick is really simple because what, what happened in this case, uh, the catch block tries to catch a null point exception, which is not a runtime exception. Runtime exception is a superclass of null pointer. So the specific error, the specific exception is not being seen because it, this catch block wants to see a specific exception. Now, what you can do is add another catch, blo catch block, catch, catch clause. So what you can do is simply add catch, another catch, oh, another catch clause. And of course, I must specify an unexpected, uh, I, I simply say, uh, hey, hey, I have something else. It's throwable. And I must be able to catch it. And I know that I can catch all throwables if I specify it like this. So I catch a throwable. What do I know now? If I catch a throwable that is not being called by the first catch block. Not yet. Yeah, let's let's see what, what happens now. But this can I break this test? Can I make an implementation that is kaput? Can I make this test become red? The purpose of life of a test. Because obviously the runtime exception that is thrown in line 16 is not the one that we expect in line 24. And still the test is, oh, it's okay. Yeah, the, the throw exception, the throw, uh, the, the catch thing catches all exceptions. All so the exceptions are meant for the J unit framework. So what do we need to do to inform that to the J unit framework that we called an exception, but it is not the correct one? Yes. Uh, you could add a fail. What a what a fail actually does is throws another exception, and that new exception is the exception that passes beyond the catch blocks because it's thrown inside the catch block so it flies past the rest because it's not caught anymore. The same thing as the ball in the, in the short video film that went off the stick because it was scammed on the stick and flew into the camera. It hasn't been caught. So that thing we can still call it, ca ca catch because, well, the, the camera ca caught it and uh, what we now can do is say, if we reach this one, fail, fail, uh, wrong exception. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Plus, uh, and then what is it? Uh, uh, X, maybe something like so. And what's here? Uh, no. Uh, it should be unexpected. You see that the parameter to the catch block is the one that is visible in the catch block. So this is the, the exception that, uh, that we indeed caught. If I now run my test, yes, I have a triangle, red text, and a red bar saying that the test failed, and that is a good test. And now I can repair my code. Now and only now can I repair the implementation of this, uh, of this thingy by simply returning the proper thing, by returning a null no pointer exception. Do not know if I have that here. Probably NPE, oh, NPE top, yeah, and throw the beast. Oh, that's not all. Okay. So now a new implementation and this uh, exception throw now s throws the exception that we are prepared to catch. Yeah, this having multiple catch block is 
well, not really common, but it has uses. For, because think of a database connection. There's a da da the, the reason of an exception, you can't make the connection to the database, your authentication failed, or your query is, uh, is put, uh, your, the, the syntax is wrong, or you, valid, uh, you violate the constraint or whatever you like. All different reasons with all different exceptions that you could deal with in a proper way. You also, and that is what the exercise, the beer exercise is all about, define your own exceptions. Like beer, uh, beer drum is empty or sold out exception or uh, puke exception when someone gets sick, something like that. You can uh, imagine any, anything, but be prepared whenever you invent an exception also make sure that you write a test method that this exception is indeed thrown in the proper conditions. So only when the uh, beer stock is sold out, then you should have this sold out exceptions, for instance. Okay. Um, what else? What else should I talk about? Oh yes. Uh, are, there, are there any questions so far? Yes. Uh, n not really. Uh, the reason I typed fail just now and I assert be failed because sometimes when, when you uh, combine uh, test frameworks, then there are multiple fails de defined all over the place. And if you want to be specific, then you must uh, name that specific one. This is the one that goes with JUnit as this one. And uh, I put that in the front so I can simply remove that, there will be no, no difference in this case. Yeah? Okay. Uh, what else? Um, I had to tell, something, uh, tell you something about, um, oh, that's over here. This is my uh, lesson script. I told a bit about the use and purpose of uh, uh, exceptions. I ex I told a little bit about checked and unchecked exceptions, the difference. Unchecked exceptions, the green ones that can be thrown everywhere without you preparing to catch it. Checked exceptions are the exceptions that you need to prepare for, so prepare to catch them or forward them to the caller. Then uh, how to throw, that was we did, how to catch, that's also what we did. Um, and um, what class try, I don't know what that means. And also the other way of testing, um, testing uh, exceptions. There's one simple way uh, to specify a test method that uh, tests an exception. And let's simply do, uh, write a, another test method that does, uh, does exactly that. that. Test uh, other uh, approach. And this is one uh, approach that is being supported by, uh, uh, by, um, by JUnit. Oh, ah, awful. Uh, expected uh, equals, and then what is happening here? Expected equals null pointer exception. That is the one uh, that we want. Let's uh, first make it a broken test. A run time exception and um, simply call the method so now I'm doing things that shouldn't be done normally that is I make a broken test I expect a runtime exception and if I run this test without this assert fail at the end then the color of the test is it passes all of them why is that? Why is this a broken test? And the hint is in this picture. Yes, lady. Exactly. A null pointer exception is actually the first child below runtime exception. So a null pointer exception is a runtime exception. So this catch block rightly catches it. Yes, this expected runtime exception matches the exception being thrown. 
Yeah. Now let's break the test again. Oh, sorry, the implementation again to make this test uh, to become sorry to become uh, red. <coughs> now you see the expected exception is missing. Other approach says this. Yes. And if I uh, throw a different uh, exception as the one that is being thrown, now what 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 could we do? We can look simply look at the picture here. Choose another one. Yeah, for instance, index out of bounds exception, also a nice one. That happens also quite a lot. Um, so we can th s throw that as well. So uh, let's uh, expect an index out of bounds exception. Um, index out of bounds ex index out of bounds exception. You see, that's also quite popular because on the top. And if I run this test again, then you should see that, let's have a look, that both tests still fail. The one, the, f the first one, because um, it says uh, this happens because the exception is not being thrown. Now we can satisfy the first uh, test that ex expects a null point exception. So this one should be green now. And the second one is different because the diff this other one expects an index out of bound exception. So what I can do is uh, return this one into an index out of bound exception or copy the line and change it into index out of bound exception, this one, and then throw this uh, stuff away. Just this one. And of course, again, after a throw, Nothing is executed, so if I want this statement to execute, a statement number 17, or line number 17, then I must comment out this one, and then the compiler say, okay. And then rerun the test, and now you'll see that the uh, first uh, test failed, test exceptions failed, but now test other approach is satisfied because it catches the exception that is being expected. Now, the advantage of the bottom one is that it's very brief. If you are doing a just a few things inside the test, then this is a way to go. But if you have a l quite some statements occurring inside this second test, in this test other approach, then you do not know exactly where the uh, exception happens. And then you would prefer the other one, um, because there you can s see exactly where you expect the exception, because after the line where the exception should occur, you spe specify your fail. And there's a third possibility, and I don't have time, sufficient time to explain that, that is uh, doing it with assertj. Assertj is a testing library, and that is the cause of this assert, uh, dot assert dot fail because assertj has a few things there. Uh, uh, follow the pointer on the uh, PSC2 website, which points to assertj as a library, testing library. It's, a f it's fun to read. You will recognize characters from the Lord of the Rings and whatnot. Uh, who are, uh, whose data are used uh, for all kinds of tests. And if you read through the test, you can almost immediately understand what the tests are all about. Yeah? And then I want to pick up the slack of last week, because last week not only was about um, the things that we talked about, namely test-driven, what is, what is the concept, what is the idea, why do you do that? I added a bit of details today, but also about collections and about uh, comparable. So we'll pick, up, pick that up, and I'll simply use the farm exercise for that. Um, so uh, go back to the farm exercise, so this uh, demo, and then um, add some tests, and maybe complete a few things. So simply go back to, do, to this, uh, test the best before method of a cauliflower. And uh, what I also want to do is I want to do uh, something like a, a freshness contest. And what is a freshness contest is all about? You have multiple cauliflowers, and you want to sort them in some way. Uh, you put them in an array list. Well, we are Java here, so you put them in an array list, and then you tell the array list, sort yourselves, please. And then the array list puts the cauliflower, cauliflowers in the order that you specify. And what would be a useful, a useful uh, order of these cauliflowers? Expiry date? Yeah, expiry date or best before date. Yes. What is the oldest 
best before or which best before date is nearest to me which is which is the well what you actually saying which is the oldest cauliflower yeah and the oldest cauliflower has the lowest birth date if you will that's the date that you packed it or the birth, the, uh, the lowest packing date packing as in putting it in in the envelope or the bag or whatever you use to um, to put in to put your cauliflowers in so first of course we must repair this our code a bit because while well, we are very easily satisfied with uh, cauliflowers that have a best before and what we did is in this case the implementation was quite lousy because we uh, we said um, well this implementation is broken and using um, uh, local date dot max is something like uh, infinity that is a, um, a cauliflower which doesn't um, which also always stays fresh but I expect you can't eat it either yeah, it might be something out of, out of stone or gold or whatever but it's not edible it needs to be processable by the bacteria in your in your gut yeah okay so let's make it into something more useful yeah how do you do that of course first specify what you want and the best way to specify things is documented so you write the documentation of what you want with this cauliflower flower what you want it to happen or maybe add that to this specification so make it, it into a well a realistic test yes we know we are the produce that we are dealing with is a cauliflower and we also know that uh, that uh, the best before date is something like a week ahead yes so what do we do we set the best before date to a specific date yeah and that would be the date that we create the cauliflower label plus the amount of how many days a cauliflower stays edible or sellable yeah so how do we specify our test and how do we assert in particular and, and uh, well if I take this test out which is actually co quite good well let's well, no let's simply make a new test because and then make this test really focused that is uh, best before seven oh seven days ahead this will not compile because Java is a, well a language that doesn't allow this but using uh, such method names is actually oh uh, is actually not that bad of an idea because the name of the method almost immediately tells you what it's all about and that it is not by convention that you don't use the Java conventions about camel case or capital case or whatever you call it well in this case I do not really mind that much and there are test frameworks that do exactly this and even allow you to put spaces in these 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 small messages all these sto small stories yeah but you may write it in any way any other way you like of course yes I don't know why this is uh, okay uh, that's that's gone okay so um, we must uh, test uh, this method and a part of it is already over here oh a part of it is already over here and I simply take it out by moving it into this method and so now that we have this we can that back here Yeah. Okay. So now I have uh, we have this. We have um, a test before date. I I stole a part of the implementation of the test uh, method uh, from above, but of course I should also cor copy these two lines, copy them, and move them down, so that my compiler is again satisfied. And now this looks like a proper test. I make a new cauliflower. I get the best before date. And now I do the test. And now let's make it in a useful one. 
Let's make sure that this cauliflower is indeed a cauliflower that has on its label, you are fresh on the 21st of uh, February, until the 21st of February, because now it's Valentine's Day. How do I do that? Yes. Yeah, we can add this to the now. What now is, is actually the now that is inside specified in local, da local date, which is a local date. And I can simply, simply do something like plus days and then specify the number of days I want this cauliflower to be fresh or sellable or best before. So this is, the exp this is now the specification. Yeah? Also over here, specification. And I could have written it as Javadoc, but didn't because I can type, you know that. And now I have a test. And now let's see what, uh, what the test does. Uh, close all over and uh, run the test. That is run this test. Yes. And it's all, it says uh, fail it's after. That is the message that's, that's specified over here is the one that's causing the red, which is probably OK because well, I didn't change the implementation, and I have a red test, and now I can improve the implementation to make it pass this test. So what do I do? Yeah? What do I do? Yeah, or seven days. Yeah, and maybe I shouldn't uh, t uh, test it uh, is after. Then I should look. Well, I should look at at the exact uh, specification of is after. So I can do that as well. Uh, find and show Java doc, and that is the way that you should approach this. Is after checks if the day is after specified date. That means uh, that it's not on the date. It must be indeed a day later. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're right. With the specification I have, with the specification I have, I must produce a cauliflower label which is eight days ahead of now. Yeah. Let's do that. Inside cauliflower. Let's do that. How do I do that? How did we make a correct implementation? Yes. Could you uh, generate the variable or something for the best before date, or otherwise it's just the time it's just the time now plus? Yes. So well, let's let's go with the last approach. So simply say a local date now, and then, sorry, and then a plus days, and then uh, specify eight. Will this pass the test? Let's check. Well, it does because it reached the last statement. This is a statement I always put in. Yeah. So if I commented that statement out, I think, well, this is okay. Let's, so let's comment this one out. And then I have a green. Are we happy? Why not? Sorry? It's a green test. Let's make it red. Yes? Okay, let's make it red. Are we happy? This is a red test. And the implementation that we chose to make is This one, which makes the test greens. So it looks as a, well, reasonable implementation. Are we happy? The guy is says, I'm not happy because it doesn't make any sense. Why not? Is that true? 
what will this cauliflower say about its best before date? If I ask it oh, t t the day after tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. So if I wait two days and I rerun my test, the test is still green, but this cauliflower starts to stink. And that is not a good sign. So what should I do? I think, I think you, 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 you call it a variable. It's not a variable. We call that a field. A field, a field that is, uh, some people call it um, an attribute, and yet other people call it um, instance variable, and yet other people call it, uh, what is another word? Uh, property, property, that's the word, property. I was searching for me member. Member is, uh, by the way, the sub of method and field. Okay, yeah? Uh, you're al we are almost done. Yes? Yes. Yeah. What I should do is the solution you gave you er me earlier, that is introduce a field. Make this local date thingy into a field. So uh, what I should do is make this into something as in the local date. First of all, introduce a variable and call it uh, best before, why not just BB, but just for, for fun. And then what I should do is refactor, refactor, oh no, no, refactor introduce a field. And I say, okay, oh, no. mm. refactor introduce a field. I, when you remember these uh, shortcuts, then you don't have to do uh, all this uh, mouse movement and then do that inside the constructor. So when you introduce a field, uh, this uh, dialog this asks you, where do you want to initialize this thing? And I choose to make it, it, to, be, it to be initialized in the field, not in the current method, because that would result in the same effect. Or I could choose to do it in the field, but in this case I do it in a normal place where the thing is instantiated, where the constructor does its work. So this is, oh, click on the wrapper button. And now you see that this best before method doesn't return anything, but um, so probably, no, like so, return, return bb. And that is uh, how, you, uh, how you would implement it. And now we are happy with the implementation if first we make it, we break it again because we change it and want a red. And then a correct implementation making the test green again. So save and test. And that's it for today. Thank you very much. Start working on the exercises.